Got enough giving up a 17 point lead, maybe 75 all, and the crowd into it from the opposition with momentum, but didn't get away with the win. Means what to you? Yeah, look, uh, we played a good 20 minutes. Uh, Wollongong or Illawarra got on a good roll in the third quarter. Uh, but it was good to see how we responded. Uh, you can see we got some players that relished that moment and uh, different guys just stood up in different uh, at different times. So for me, it was really pleasing to weather the storm. And then, you know, we, we got the stops and then we executed very well on offense. I know that D-Trans was a real focus yep. early on and you got that job done. Offensively though, that's your highest score of the season. You haven't been kept below 90 this month. Your season average is 89, now it's mid-90. So how good can this offense be? Oh, well, a lot of it's driven through our defense. Uh, you know, we got some uh, potent offensive players. Uh, but if you don't have the ball, you can't play offense. So we, we work hard on defense, our different schemes. I think that's where our biggest growth has been. Uh, but for you guys, you can see it statistically in our offense. Luke Travers, I know, probably early yep. midweek game in New Zealand, then away to Sydney. Will he play oh, any of those games, do you know? Oh, well, through my eyes, absolutely. Um, but, you know, he, he did some some kind of ankle sprain, so we'll have to evaluate and assess and go from there. But, uh, you know, we're lucky we got some days off before our next game, so hopefully he can bounce back pretty quick. How yeah, important was it to get that result uh, after the overtime loss to the other day? Yeah, look, right, right now with the way the ladder is, every win, it doesn't matter who you're playing, where you're playing, like a, a win is huge. And against some teams, it's like nearly like a double win. Um, so to come on the road and have a performance like that gets this part of our road uh, triple, I guess you would say, on, on a good start. Obviously, the Hawks have been struggling a lot this season. What did you actually make of them? Then? Obviously, that third quarter, they were, they were pretty impressive. Yeah, look, uh, they're, they're a dangerous team. Uh, as, as you guys referenced before, like in transition, they're, they're an explosive and dynamic team. Uh, Jacob, uh, you know, in my opinion, he's giving a lot of young guys in this league an opportunity. Um, so depending on how you look at that, um, you come to your own conclusion. But like, you know, who before the season thought someone like Lockie Dent would be playing to this level? Uh, so Jacob has to get some uh, credit for the way that he's persisted with these young guys and they're growing and getting better. Um, do, do you reckon the, the combination Yeah, look, what I would say is uh, you, you mentioned those three. You throw in Webster uh, and you throw in Manic. That's pretty good five when things are going very well. Uh, potent offensively. Uh, Luke Travers, very smart player, so he complements those guys. So uh, I think three of those guys ended up in the 20-plus range tonight. And then Thomas, high teens. Um, we're, we're at our best when we share the ball. And that's what we did in the first half. We did a fantastic job of getting deep into the paint, moving the ball. Uh, and you saw in, in the first half, everyone got rewarded with the unselfishness, with the way we played. Disappointed to let them back in the game in that third quarter? Uh, look, as a coach, absolutely. Uh, you're always looking for the perfect game. That's never going to happen. Uh, I actually really like the way we responded. And we got stops, but then our offense with the, the shots we got from the stops was very efficient. We didn't play panicky, um, you know. So I, that was the thing that I really liked from our team tonight in the fourth quarter. And what were your words at three quarter time to the boys knowing that the Hawks were on, on their way back in? Yeah, look, uh, all night all I preached was transition defense. Um, because the minute Tyler Harvey walks into this gym, he's in range. Fraser, Fraser obviously wanted to prove a point, playing against his former club. Uh, Sam Frolling's had a great year, so uh, they, they got some potent weapons, especially when you play in transition. So uh, that was what I was preaching, because you want to try and fix everything, but you never will. John um, Brady Manning went 0-5 against Brisbane tonight. Yep. I think he was one basket short of his season high. Mm -hmm. uh, but season-high rebounds assists. So yep. what did you make that performance, that rebound as a whole? Yeah, look, what I would say regarding Brady is um, he works hard. That's what a lot of people don't see is every day he brings it. I think he's maturing into a professional. We forget this is his first year at this level. 
first time he's been away from his home, his family, all of that type of stuff. So he's dealing with a lot of stuff. It took him, he had a rough patch at the start of the year. And uh, it's, I would say, since it coincides since we've been playing at a high level, his productivity has been pretty efficient. Corey, people will look at that and go, high score of the season, plenty of um, sharing when it comes to offense, etc. But it was against the team coming last of 2 and 15. What, what do you say about that? Man, at the end of the day, they're pro ball players as well. Um, every night's a battle in this league. You, you can't take any team for granted, um, as you see how they played in the third quarter and came back, you know. Um, this league's full of talent. Every team's tough, so you can't take it lightly. So you know, that's my response to that. They're pros. Yeah. Hey, Corey, thanks for resilience you guys showed when they, they came at you hard, the crowd's up and about, they tied at 75 and then obviously the guy next to you has a response, but as you work further into this season, is that the thing that's most impressive with the moment, the way the guys are starting to respond to adversity? It, look, absolutely. Uh, we've been through a little bit uh, up to this part of the year. Um, and then we're finally figuring out um, how everyone best operates. Uh, you saw when we responded in that fourth quarter, it just what, wasn't one or two guys. It was everyone chipping in. Uh, and that's what I like about uh, our productivity is it's across the board. We have multiple uh, contributors at a high level. Uh, and But you could say that about any team that's a successful team. Uh, you've got to have contributors all over the floor. You just can't really rely on one or two guys. So uh, we're, we're finding a good groove. Uh, I, I hope we can find a groove where we can really string some in a row instead of having hiccups along the way. What's the, the main thing you really want to work on you know, as far as, you know, is, it, is it the D-trans, is it the interior D? I, mean, I, I know you, you came in preaching defensive rebounding. The rebounding's been a bit of a, a, a problem, obviously, for you. I mean, they were out rebounding, I think it was 10 to 1 to start, but you pulled it back. So, I mean, what is it that, that you feel you need to become more consistent at in the second half of the season? Yeah, look, our, our, our defense, uh, you know, us getting back in transition, our ball pressure, because uh, when you're back in your set, uh, you know, then you're not rotating, you're not out of position to rebound and all of those kinds of things. So uh, just having that urgency to get back, uh, you know, build your wall to make it tough for them to get into the paint, you know, like paint touches just kill you. So uh, when we're locked in and we're, we're in tune with our schemes, we're very good. But then when we get a little lax, uh, as they showed in the third quarter, uh, we, we fall back to the pack that way. Just finally, just a, a quick word on the guy next to you. you know, a huge fourth quarter when you really needed that 13 points in the fourth line. And yep. you described him in the preseason as a world class scorer, and obviously we saw that tonight. Yeah, look. Uh it, it took me a, a good night's sleep to finally figure out I probably should put him in the starting lineup. And since then, I think he's kicked a few goals. So uh, that's on me. <laughs> All right, thanks, Johnny. No worries. I have no comment on any of the media speculation out there. Yep. I have no comment about any media speculation. And I wasn't part of last year, so I can't comment about that part either. Craig, I have the best medical team. That's their responsibility. I struggle to make a layup on my good days, so to ask about a guy's ankle, that's a tough question for me to answer right now. But Luke Travers will be traveling with us to New Zealand, and if I have to tape him up, I'll tape him up and hopefully he'll play. <laughs>
Thank you. No worries. Cheers. Thanks, Thanks fellas. Yep. Um, there's someone in here from CB. Yeah, here.